As I said, we're going to be talking about a specific area of interviewing the behavioral questions that you may get during an interview. So we're going to go over some general interviewing tips. We're going to cover some general do's and don'ts in this presentation. Then we're going to talk about behavioral interviewing and kind of go in depth into how to answer these questions, why they're generated. And then we'll look at some example behavioral interview questions that you may get during a typical interview. So the first thing we want to talk about is being prepared for the interview. Companies prepare for their interviews with you, so it's your turn to do the same thing as well. Most companies are going to ask you what you know about their company, about the position, and if you have not done this research and have not studied the job description, then you're going to, you're going to come up lacking in this area. You also want to make sure you look at current events, news articles, press releases regarding the company and have those in your mind for the interview. Uh, you also want to try to uh, get a hold of and review the company mission statement. And knowing this and will give you an idea of their culture and how they interact in the community, etc. You want to write down projects or examples that are going to show your strength you want to have a clear idea of what weaknesses you might have and how you are managing those, where you can improve on those. Not necessarily solve them or fix them, but that you recognize them and that you're managing them. You want to know your biggest success and you want to know your biggest blunder and what you learn from it so that you won't repeat it. Some typical interview questions that you should be prepared for especially the tell me about yourself question. The interviewer is going to be looking for things that are not on your resume. They want to know something about you that they don't, that they don't already know. Another question that you're going to get is what is your greatest strength? And you want to have an example with, that highlights that strength as well. And finally, you want to prepare questions to ask the interviewer. You can ask specific questions about the interviewer, such as how they got to the position where they're at, how long they've been with the company, how they've seen the company change, where they see the company headed. You could ask questions about the company culture. You could ask questions from news articles, such as if you found out information about a new project that they're getting ready to start. You want to make sure that you, you don't ask any money questions. Those questions are off the table unless the interviewer brings money up. Then you, then you have the permission, basically, to ask any question you'd like to ask. Some interviewing do's. We talked about this in our earlier webinar on interviewing. You want to be on time, which basically means 10 to 15 minutes early. If you show up exactly on time, then you're late. If you're late, don't ignore it. Apologize with a good, truthful reason. Things happen to people. They get stuck in traffic. They get lost. Just be truthful, okay? And, and hit it heads on and apologize. Present yourself in a professional manner. So this is going to go to your image, how you're professionally dressed. It's also going to include your hair, your stature, your eye contact, your language as well. Shake hands. Be prepared. Be confident. Make eye contact. Be yourself and relax as much as you can. You know, definitely one of the most important aspects of the interview is your first impression. So. Make sure your handshake is firm. Not a superman, but definitely not a dead fish. You want to repeat their name when it's given to you, such as, Hi, Pam, it's nice to meet you. Here's a, a great list of don'ts. And number one on that list, you're looking at your watch. Don't do that. <laughs> that is a big no-no. Be careful. Don't bring any gum into the room with you. Try to get rid of that before the interviewer gets there. Be mindful of using slang that is not very professional, not very mature. Be careful of fidgeting, like twisting in your chair like I'm doing right now because I'm nervous. Tapping your feet, popping your fingernails, that type of thing. Don't be looking out the window. Be careful about going off on tangents. Worst thing you can do is get in the middle of a question and forget what question you're answering. Don't ever lie or embellish. A behavioral interview is designed to peel you like an onion, and if you're embellishing on your stories, the more, the deeper they peel, you're going to get caught. Your story's not going to pan out. Be careful about being overly comfortable. 
Now this is, goes to, you know, kind of mirroring the body language of the interviewer. If they're leaned back in their chair, almost with their feet up on the table, you can relax a little bit, but not too much. Be careful about giggling excessively. Don't be playing with your hair. Again, don't pop your fingers. And finally, don't try to control the interviewer or the interview. Uh, this is, at first, this is the interviewer's time. Your, your time will come where you have a little control over the interview. So a good idea is to take off your watch, leave your cell phone in the car. If you don't, make sure you turn it off. If you have your watch on and you have your cell phone in your pocket, you might be tempted to look at it and the interviewer is going to think you're bored. If you have some reason why you're watching your watch, like you need to leave at a certain time in order to uh, get to a class because of a project or a test, tell the interviewer up front so that they can keep track of the time for you. That way you don't have to worry about it. Think about the questions before you answer them. It's okay to pause before you answer the question. If silence is awkward, say, that's a good question, let me think about that. Or ask if they can come back to that question, but you may run out of time, so be careful about doing that. Don't pick up your pen until you're ready to take notes, and mainly you're probably not going to take any notes until it's time for you to ask questions. So be careful about, you know, your pen, you might be tempted to fiddle or or make distracting noises with it by clicking it on and off, which is kind of one of my bad habits. If they offer water or coffee and you want it, take it. They offer it for a reason. You can go ahead and have it, you know, and this will allow you a final opportunity to regroup and get yourself set for the interview. So behavioral interviewing is kind of what we're really going to talk about now, and we're going to talk about this for a few, few more slides. Behavioral interviewing is going to focus on your past behaviors, skills, experiences, and abilities as they relate to the job. We're going to talk about the purpose for behavioral interviewing, what the interviewers are looking for, how to answer the questions, and then we're going to talk about several topic areas for behavioral questions. So the first is the purpose. Purpose is to have the interviewee tell a story about a type of experience so that the interviewer can see how you have dealt with certain situations in the past. Because your past behavior and performance predicts future behavior and performance. And this gives the interviewer a glimpse on how you may react if faced with a similar situation. Don't make up the story. The interviewer will likely ask you follow-up questions about it. And if you've lied or embellished and in the pressure of the situation, you're not going to remember what you just said. And you're done. The interview, you know, may go on, but you're not going to get the position. So think of it as, you know, the purpose of it is kind of like a three-legged chair. Can do, will do, and have done. And that's what you're going to be showing them when you're answering the behavioral questions. So what the interviewers are looking for, they're looking for core competencies that are key or critical to, to successful job performance. So for instance, content. They're looking for your, your computer, computer skills, for example, or accounting skills, you know, knowledge that is, that is work-specific. Other things that they could be looking for are functional or transferable skills that are, you know, used with people and information. And then finally, adaptive or self-management skills, such as dependability, being a team player, self-directed, self-motivated, punctuality, etc. Here's a list of key skills that the interviewers are going to be looking for. So they're looking at your verbal communication, your ability to solve, make decisions and solve problems, to plan, organize, and prioritize your work, so your time management, ability to obtain and process information in order to come to good decisions, your ability to analyze quantitative data, the technical knowledge that you might have related to the job, your proficiency with computer software and programs, ability to create you know, and edit written reports, and your ability to sell or influence others. You know, all of these skills, depending on the job description, are, are the things that they're going to be looking for. And in some cases, they'll be looking for all of these things. So how do we prepare? You want to detect or pick out desirable characteristics that you think the interviewer may be looking for by researching the company, the job description. Really, you're going to get a lot of these things from the job description. If you 
do not spend the time to really dig into the job description and think about the things that they're looking for and how you match those things, you're, you're really not getting prepared. So, you know, in researching the company, for example, an accounting position, they're going to want to know your accounting knowledge and probably working in a teamwork culture. If it's like a technical manager training position, then, you know, they're going to want to know what kind of technical knowledge you have and the extent of it, your ability to work within a team, and then your management and leadership skills. So once you've done that, you want to identify examples that where you demonstrated those skills. So examples from your past as far as projects, where you had success or failure, and the things that you learned from the, from the failures, if you had them, functions such as communication skills, management or teamwork, and then again, your ability to manage yourself, not only your time, but your ability to be a part of a team as well. And then you want to identify two or three of your assets that you want to include in these stories to make sure that they understand what strengths you bring to the position. The next thing, we're going to talk about the process for answering these specific types of questions. Most all of these questions are going to start pretty much the same. It's going to be, tell me about a time when, describe a situation when, and then you're going to kind of tell them a story based off of that question. So for example, tell me a time when you weren't very pleased with your performance. What did you do about it? So the first thing you're going to want to do is talk about the situation and the problem. So you're going to start to tell the story about it. So for example, I had a midterm exam that I needed to do well on in order to do well in the class. So I've given the context of a midterm exam and the problem. I'm not doing well in the class and I need to do well in this test in order to do well in the class. The next thing you're going to go into are the actions that you take to remedy or deal with this situation. For example, I studied really hard for the exam to make sure I was prepared. And then finally, you're going to talk about the result, the outcome of the actions that you took to remedy this situation. So for example, when I got to the test, I was stumped by many of the questions. I made a C on the midterm versus the A that I expected. Now this particular scenario, this did not end as a success. And for most of your stories, you would want to make sure that you use a success story. Now, you will be asked questions where they're looking for failure. And it is okay to have a story that is not a success. But what you want to do is make sure and add on, if it's not a success, what you learned so that you won't repeat that and, and fail again. So in my example, what I learned is I went and talked to my professor to see how I could better prepare for the next test so that I won't repeat the same result for this test. So it's very important that you're able to take the interviewer from the start to the finish and that you don't leave anything out. Don't have them ask what happened once you, you, know, you studied for the test. Make sure you give them the results and the outcome. And really make sure if your results or your outcome are not a success that you Add on what you learn so that you will not repeat that same mistake. It's very important. I see a lot of interviewers in my mock interviews that leave out the results, and I have to ask them what happened. You know, they just forget. So try to remember, you're going to have to take them from soup to nuts, so beginning to end with the question, with the answer that you give. So now we're going to talk about some topic areas and, and some example questions that could be covered in any typical behavioral interview. So this first topic, a focus and dedication to the industry. So again, talking about what you know about their company, talking about what you know about the industry, and maybe some experience that you have, you know, not only within the industry or maybe with another company, what tr attracts you to this industry as a career, what attracts you to the position as a career, and they're looking for things that they don't already know on paper. Next, you'll be looking at technical, professional knowledge. They're going to be looking at situations behaviorally, for example, maybe when you were over your head and had to look for help or assistance on a project and what you learned from that and the things that you take away from that. Another really good topic area, and you can almost bet your bottom dollar that you're going to get asked something to do with teamwork. 
most every company, you're going to be dealing with other members of the company, not only within your department, but within other departments. So you're going to be dealing not only with customers, possibly customers outside that you're servicing, but also customers within the company. And they're going to be looking for situations where your teamwork, um, did others agree with you on a project? Was there a time you were working on a project and somebody wasn't carrying their weight? Tell them about a time when you motivated a team to meet a deadline or a goal. And these things are going to be very important. You can almost bet with almost any job, they want to know how you're going to interact with the other people in the company. Maintaining a, a culture in a company that is having success is going to be very important to them. And that's what you know, behavioral interviewing is all about. Next, another area is your flexibility, your ability to adapt on the fly to situations where you, you don't have control and the types of experiences you've had with that, for example, and what you learned from this in those situations. Another area is your work standards and your work ethic. And they're going to be looking at, you know, one of the things that you can expect is you're going to be judged, basically. You're going to have a breakdown of your work performance, a review periodically. Most every company does this because they want to make sure that everybody is headed in the right direction and that you're reaching the goals that you want to be reaching. And so, you know, how you're going to react to being evaluated and how you've reacted in the past when you didn't agree with your evaluation is going to be something they're going to want to look at. They're also going to want to look at your ethics. Ethics is a big deal in the business world these days. All you got to do is watch the news. People are being judged on their ethics all the time. And so making sure that you have that mindset and that you are aware of that is going to be very important to them. Another area that they're going to be looking at is how you plan and organize, especially your time. You know, right now for some of you individuals, you know, you're going to school and working. For individuals that are already out in the workforce, they're going to be looking at how you prioritize your day, how you make the decisions on what you're going to do first and what you're going to do second, how you reach your deadlines, and they're going to want examples about these kinds of things. Next, they're going to look at communication. These days, we are all about instant messaging called email, if you haven't heard of it. It's a really big deal these days. I get dozens of emails a day, and I, I don't know if these individuals can put together a coherent sentence. You're not sending a text message, and so they want to know if you understand how to verbally and, and, and written communication, how you are able to do that. And so there, this is another topic that you could be questioned about. Next, they're going to be looking at your ability to analyze and risk-taking. You know, what steps do you follow to study a problem before making the decision? Is it going to take you a week to come to a decision? Are you going to be the type of person that asks permission, or, you know, basically asks a lot of questions, or fly off the handle and have to beg forgiveness once you've taken off and tried to complete a project? Some other possible questions that you could get. We're going to go over some of these right here. So describe a situation in which you were able to use persuasion. So this is going to be looking at your ability to influence people and how you reacted to that. And if you were in a situation where you weren't able to, what did you learn that you might be able to in the future to get people bought into your ideas and moving in the direction of completing your goals? Describe an instance when you had to think on your feet to extricate yourself from a difficult situation. So again, looking at your ability to adapt and be flexible and make quick decisions with little information. Give a specific example of a time when you use good judgment and logic in solving a problem. So they're going to, you know, this is a really big deal in decision making, is that your ability to use good judgment and logic in solving problems. Give an example of a time when you had to relatively come to a decision uh, quickly. Again, decision making without a lot of information. Give a specific occasion in which you conform to a policy with which you did not agree. So your ability to conform to a culture when you don't always agree with the policy and, and how you work within that to maybe change the policy or reconcile it with you so that you understand why the policy is in place and why you should follow it. And then finally, tell me about a time when you had to go above and beyond the call of duty in order to get the job done. 
for most of you, you can expect when you first go into a company, you're going to be asked to kind of go above and beyond. You're going to be asked to stay and finish projects. You're going to be given tough deadlines to meet, and you're going to have to go above and beyond the call. They're also going to be looking for times when you did these things without being asked, and you didn't count the cost or the consequence of having to do this. So all of these areas are, are designed to, like I said earlier, you're like an onion, and they're trying to peel you open to see how you tick and what makes you go and how that you're going to perform if you get into these types of situations again. The analogy I like to use with behavioral interviewing is that with a behavioral interview, I should be able to ask you one question, if I'm trying to peel you open, ask you one original question, and then every question from that point be based off of your answers. That's why we mentioned earlier that you want to be careful about you know, expanding the truth a little bit because it can come back to bite you. You definitely do not want to lie or embellish when you're in a behavioral interview. The individual is going to be taking notes and they're going to be looking for key phrases, key ideas, and they're going to hone in on those things and they're going to drill down until they strike oil. They will go until they're satisfied that you have what it takes in order to do the job, to fit into their culture, or whatever else it is that they're trying to come to grips with. We want to thank you for attending today's webinar.